Aircraft are fitted with high lift devices to reduce the takeoff and landing distances. This permits operation at greater weights from given runway lengths and enables greater payloads to be carried. A flap is a hinged portion of the trailing or leading edge that can be deflected downwards and so produce an increase of camber. For low-speed aerofoils, the flaps will be on the trailing edge only, but on high-speed aerofoils where the leading edge may be symmetrical or have a negative camber, there will usually be flaps on both the leading edge and the trailing edge. Plane flaps deflect downward to increase the camber and therefore lift produced by the wing. The plane flap has a simple construction and gives a good increase in CL max, although with fairly high drag. Wait, now what is CL max? The maximum lift coefficient of the airfoil. In other words, as the angle of attack increases, lift increases, all other factors being equal. When the aircraft reaches the maximum angle of attack, lift begins to diminish rapidly. This is the stalling angle of attack, known as CL max critical angle of attack. Now let us come back, the plane flap is used mainly on low-speed aircraft and where very short takeoff and landing are not required. Let me show you an example, plane flaps are commonly found on small aircraft, such as the Cessna 172. This is the cockpit of a Cessna 172 and this is the flap lever. Now observe as I push down the flap, one notch of the flap is activated. This is 10 degree of flap. Now let's push the second notch of the flap and notice that the flap goes further down, indicating a 20 degrees angle. The third and final notch of the flap is the full flap, which is 30 degrees. Split flaps are divided into two sections, with the lower portion extending downward and the upper portion remaining fixed. When deployed, they increase the wing area and generate additional lift while producing more drag compared to plain flaps. The split flap gives about the same increase in lift as the plane flap at low angles of attack but gives slightly more at higher angles as the upper surface camber is not increased. Let me show you an example, the split flaps are often used in older aircraft designs, such as the Douglas DC-3. Let me show you, well, this is the cockpit of a Douglas DC-3, I know how old this is, and this is the flap lever in this aircraft. Now observe as I pull the lever the first notch of the flap is activated, and the sequence continues, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Slotted flaps have a small gap between the flap surface and the wing when deployed. The purpose of the slot is to direct higher pressure air from the lower surface over the flap and re-energize the boundary layer. This delays the separation of the airflow on the upper surface of the flap. The slotted flap gives a bigger increase in CL max than the plane or split flap and much less drag. Slotted flaps are commonly found on many commercial aircraft, including the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. Let me show you the slotted flaps in Boeing B737-800. This is the cockpit of a Boeing B737-800 and this is the flap lever. There are 8 flap settings on the 7, 3, 7, 800. Now observe as I pull the first notch of flaps which is 8 degrees, and the sequence goes on. Fowler flaps are a type of flap that extends backward and downward when deployed, increasing both the wing area and the wing's camber. Because of the combined effects of increased area and camber, the Fowler flap gives the greatest increase in lift of the flaps considered and also gives the least drag because of the slot and the reduction of thickness. Example. The Fowler flap is commonly used on larger aircraft, such as the Boeing 747 and Airbus A380. Let me show you the Fowler flap in a Boeing 747-400. This is the cockpit of a 7-4, 7, 400. And this is the flap lever. Now observe as I push the lever. The first notch of flaps is activated and the sequence continues. Like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.